Have you ever come home and this is what you see in your entryway? Or you go to put on your shoes and you really have no place to sit. So I thought about it for a little while. What if we had a place to store our shoes and a place to sit to put them on? So of course, I turned to Amazon and looked at some different options. I found a few things ranging from 40 bucks to over 200 bucks. We didn't love all the styles. None of them quite fit the space that we had. So I thought, why not just design something yourself and build it? So I did. We have a unique space there between the doorway and the carpet, so I decided to base the dimensions off that. We also wanted a double use and have a bench that would be a cup holder because our couch sits right there. So we decided on two benches with the same outside dimensions. After I had a good idea of what we wanted dimensionally, I decided to use SketchUp. I wanted to make these as simple and as durable as possible, so I just decided to use dimensional lumber. I wanted to begin with the end in mind, so I wanted to figure out which pieces of lumber I would stick in which places. After considering the actual dimensions of dimensional lumber, I decided two 2x8s on top would be a great bench top, and two 2x7s would make great legs. That'll give me an inch lip on the top on both the side and the front. But they don't make 2x7s, so I'll just have to rip them down. I also thought it would be nice to have a section for tall boots. So on the one bench, I just split it in half so we have a tall section and then a smaller shoe section. We can just flip the bench around when winter time rolls around. And you'll notice I use 1x7 for the middle shelves. So I figured out how much wood I needed for these 3 foot benches and got started. It was easiest to start with the bench tops. I started with 3 foot boards times 4. I just measured, marked, set the miter block, and cut 4 pieces. I wasn't completely sure about the leg height, so after a little bit of testing, I decided to go with 17 inch legs. So two per leg, four times two benches, eight of those. So for all the pieces other than the top, I had to rip down by an inch off each side. To make sure everything is even, I like to cut multiple boards at a time. You can also clamp them together and sand them smooth. Once everything is cut, it's time to sand every piece and put it together. Lay everything out to make sure you have the right dimensions. Then you can start drilling your pocket holes, keeping in mind where you want your pocket holes to be hidden. Now it's time to start gluing things together. For the two bench tops, I just decided to glue them together. Since I don't have a ton of clamps, this took me several days. I'd rather use what clamps I have to make sure they're all seated properly than to hurrying through it with a bad glue up. Glue together the bench top, the side legs, and the bottom shelf. If you'd like, you can put extra pocket holes in to hold the legs or the bench top together. Once you have the full pieces glued together of the top, the side legs, and the bottom shelf, it's time to start screwing them together into a bench. For these two buys, you'll want to use two and a half inch pocket screws. I started with screwing the bottom shelf to the two legs. Turn your legs upside down and measure a half inch from the bottom. That will be the gap between the floor and the bottom of the shelf. Add the width of your 2 by and make a mark. Then you can take a scrap piece and use it as a holder for your 2 by while you screw it in. Double check your measurements, make fine adjustments, and then screw in the bottom shelf. Make sure each of the joints is square. You want it tight enough to be snug, but not so over tightened that it starts stripping the wood. Any overlap on your joinery can be sanded down later. For this specific split shelf, we're going to add the vertical board first in the middle. Use your horizontal shelves as a spacer to place your vertical board. Then screw the vertical board to the bottom shelf. Okay, before you screw in your horizontal shelves, you'll want to screw the top of the bench together so that your screw gun will fit. If you forget about that like me, then you'll have to unscrew your horizontal shelf and put it back together after the top is on, which is the nice thing of not having glue. Okay, once the top is on, go ahead and use the same clamping guide method to lay your horizontal shelves on a pre-measured mark. When you're screwing in the horizontal shelf, make sure the whole bench is upside down so the pocket holes will be hidden. And since this is the one by, use the inch and a quarter screws. And that's pretty much it for the assembly. You'll notice when it's upside down, you can see all the pocket screws, but once you flip it right side up, they all pretty much disappear. You can still see the pocket holes on the inside of the shelf, but you can fill those with plugs, or you can use dowels with Japanese saw and just sand them. 
Once you get the pocket holes filled to your liking, it's a good idea to go back over with a sander and remove any lips that you don't like and round those corners to make them nice. You can then stain it to your liking. For this one, my wife went over the whole bench with a Velspar's carbon gray. Just use an old t-shirt or a rag and cover the entire thing in a thick coat. After some light sanding, she then used a weathered gray to cover the whole bottom of the bench to give it that two-tone look. Once you get the wood looking the way you like, put a layer or two of this clear wood finish satin lacquer. That should give it a nice seal. Once you get a place to where you want it, if you have any sort of rock, you can put a felt pad on one of the corners. That should help. Overall, if I had to rename this video, it wouldn't be how to build a shoe bench. It would be more like Believe in yourself. If you have a space that's unique and you need to know how to fill it, design something. Build it. I like buying stuff online if it fits exactly what I need, but when it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to buy something that doesn't quite work. Remember, with a little bit of planning and a little bit of work, you can make good things happen. We'll see you next time.